What's going on Packers fans? Bass here and today I just basically wanted to go over a brief update on the Packers salary cap situation as of March 11th. That is six days before the new league year. Before I get into it, if you haven't subscribed already, it would be greatly appreciated if you did. Um, I recently saw that around 90% of my viewers actually aren't subscribed, so if you do enjoy my content and do enjoy the Green Bay Packers, definitely consider subscribing and liking the video. It means a lot. It helps my channel out, and I would greatly appreciate it. I post everything Packers from highlights, analysis, news, and breakdowns. So now to go down into the nitty-gritty of the situation that is the Green Bay Packers salary cap. A lot of teams are in this same garbage situation with the salary cap only sitting at 182.5 what was announced two days ago so as of that number which is official the packers are currently 9.679 over the cap they need to clear 9.679 million by march 17th now there are a number of ways they can do this one big move should clear it but there are a multitude of ways they can do it and a different multitude of restructures they can do for different players. So first and foremost, I'm going to start with an Aaron Rodgers full salary and bonus restructure. If you want to learn more on the Aaron Rodgers situation, I have a video down below I just posted the other day. Just go down in the description and click on the link. But a full restructure of an Aaron Rodgers contract would save roughly $15.233 million off the cap. So right then and there, that would get you into the positives. I think some form of an Aaron Rodgers restructure is definitely coming. I don't know if it's going to be a full salary and bonus push out, but it's definitely going to be some sort of one. Now, another option that we were all certain of about a month ago was cutting Preston Smith, but Brian Gutekunst came out and said he expects Preston Smith to be with the team next season. Now, I don't know if that's for trade bait or to eventually post June 1st cut him after uh, basically figuring out some more cap things. But as of right now, if you were to cut him today, a pre-June 1st designation, you're going to save $8 million. So right there, you're almost at the uh, zero mark. Now, if you were to do a post-June 1st designation, which you won't receive the rest of that money until after June 1st, so it doesn't really matter, but if you were to do a post-June 1st designation, then he would net you um, 12 million in savings. But say you do want to keep Preston Smith. Say it wasn't all smoke and mirrors from Gutekunst there. Uh, if you restructure just his bonus into the future, that would save you 2 million there. So if you want to keep Preston Smith, that's probably the smart thing to do. Now, another option which I definitely see coming in the next six days is cutting Dean Lowry. That saves you an instant $3.3 million. Uh, I think it's Kingsley Kiki's time to shine. I think they could either sign an old old vet like Tyson Alulu or definitely draft a guy in the mid-rounds for D-line. But um, Dean Lowry's contract, since he signed it, really hasn't lived up to that. I could definitely see him being cut within the next six days. Now, another one that I really want to happen, which I think is going to happen very soon, sooner rather than later, is extending Devontae Adam. Dude's the best receiver in the league. He deserves a new deal. He deserves to be signed until at least 2025. So the Packers and Russ Ball get it done. Now, if you were to extend him into 2025, lowering his 2021 cap hit, you'd save roughly around 5.5 million. Now, these are all kind of rough estimates, but it kind of gives you an idea of where you'd be at in terms of salary cap. And last but not least, you have extend slash restructure Zadarius Smith. If you saw the other day, he tweeted out, I want to be a Packer for life. And then he also uh, made a story on Instagram. Someone put that news up and he said, pa at Packers, let's get it done. So it's clear he either wants an, he wants an extension, but he's also willing to restructure to kind of, you know, help the team out. And he just wants to remain on the Packers, which I'm completely okay with. I love Z, great, le great leader, great teammate and uh, definitely has been one of our better defenders over the past couple years. Now, if you were to just restructure his roster bonus, just the bonus, over to future years, you'd save roughly three mil. So if you do that to both Preston and Z, that's five mil total. Then you can cut Dean Lowry, then you're at 8.3 million, and then you're kind of close to the zero mark without even touching Aaron Rodgers. Now, if you were to restructure all of his salary and bonus, then you save roughly 8.2 million, which, you know, is is definitely an idea if you're if you're willing to stick with Z until at least the end of his current deal, which is set to only be through 2022. Then that's definitely an option they can explore. 
Now, I don't have the exact numbers if they were to extend Z, because I don't know really where to start in terms of years and all of that, but I would assume if they were to extend him a year or two, his 2021 cap hit, which is at 22 million, 22 million, would definitely lower by around five, six, seven million there as well. And then of course you can restructure on top of that, move some more of that unguaranteed salary and bonus into the future years that he just signed. But that'll about do it. I just wanted to go over a brief little recap of the current salary cap situation of the Green Bay Packers as we near closer to the new league year start. Let me know in the comments down below what you think they will do and how they will get under the cap. I'm interested to hear. And on that note, as always, go Pack Go!